Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. John Oldham, Chief of Staff at the Menninger Clinic, and welcome back to our series of podcasts that we call Menninger Mindscape. Every uh, podcast that we do, we try to bring you something interesting um, that we believe is particularly relevant in terms of clinical work. And today we're delighted to have Dr. Ben Weinstein with us, who is director of our assessment service here at Menninger Clinic. He's also associate professor in our Department of Psychiatry at Baylor. And Ben is uh, both a neurologist and a psychiatrist and runs um, a division that includes a very, very busy inpatient component uh, as well as outpatient assessments. But Ben, tell us a word or two about the Comprehensive Psychiatric Assessment Service. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. The assessment service that we run uh, is truly a, a chance to look at someone's whole life and put them in the context of their family, of their work, uh, and as a part of their life, their struggles with mental illness. We have the opportunity for two or three weeks to work with someone, directly observe them, interact with them, and do a number of evaluations trying to help really boil down to the core issues of why their life is not going the way that they wish it was. And it's a, it is a truly wonderful group of people to work with. We have psychologists, social workers, wonderful nursing staff, neuropsychologists, internists. It's a, a real team approach uh, and it, it's the most gratifying work I've ever done. Well, that's really terrific, and, and patients who come here have often been through lots of other efforts to get treated, to get better, to feel better, and are often just kind of stuck. So you have the chance to kind of look at it in depth, top to bottom, and really see if there's a way to figure it out. And sometimes that requires some specialized testing. So we don't have a lot of time today to talk about all the things that go on on CPAS, as we mm -hmm. call it. Uh, but one is particularly interesting, and this is what we call targeted genetic testing, yes, which sir. reveals some things that sometimes have not been known that then moves things in a, in a good direction. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's very common that uh, our patients will have had good treatment elsewhere and have done all the right things and have not you know, recovered from their depression. And uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, medications are a part of treatment. Uh, and what we are looking at is what about them is different. And so we do some genetic testing, looking at both how the medicines work in the brain and also how our body metabolizes the medicines and what impact these things may have on their care. And well, occasionally it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, just so we're clear, we're not really talking about the kind of technology that sometimes people look for, which is to do sort of map the whole genome in, in, right. in every patient. And that's maybe coming in the future not too far away, mm -hmm. but that's not what we're talking about. This is really looking at, at medication and how it's managed. I sometimes uh, hear it referred to as psychodynamics and, psych and I mean, ph pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Mm -hmm. We talk about psychodynamics here as well. Yes. <laughs> but pharmacodynamics really is what the drug or the medication does to the body. Mm -hmm. And pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the medication. And sometimes those are things that really get in the way of the delivery of an effective dose to the brain in a way that would work. G give us an example or two of how that has well, we've, looked. We've been doing this for a little over uh, a year and a half, and we've had a number of really interesting cases. One that immediately comes to mind is a young woman who had had good treatment, a number of medication trials for her depression, but was never able to tolerate medicines. and. She was one of our very first cases, and what we found is that the medications she had tried, were, which were appropriate, the most common things prescribed to people initially are SSRIs, 
Um, SSRIs are an antidepressant, are, are, right? Are, it's an uh, antidepressant, correct. And these uh, medicines are very commonly helpful. But for this person, she was unable to tolerate it. And it turns out that she had both a pharmacodynamic and a pharmacokinetic reason that those medicines wouldn't be tolerated. Uh, she was in the highest risk group for side effects uh, both in both categories. And so we were able to, based on that information, choose an alternate medicine that would help her recover from her depression. And uh, we've had a number of cases like this where... But, but so here's a case where um, the right medication was being prescribed, mm -hmm. the problem was depression, it was severe, and she couldn't tolerate the medication. Mm -hmm. So you were able to figure out that it wasn't um, that the treatment was not able to work, it was just that that particular type of antidepressant was not going to work for her. Right. But it wasn't the only type she could take. That's right. And, you know, there were other options. Uh, we found one that uh, she was able to tolerate. Uh, her anxiety and depression improved. Uh, and she returned to her good provider uh, that referred her. Uh, and, you know, it's very common that these patients are getting good care. They're doing everything that we tell them to do, ask them to do to try to recover. And there's just something out there uh, that prior to this, we really had no information about. Uh, we couldn't say what was happening once people took the pill. Yeah, right. Uh, and you know, this is the, the beginning, the, the crack in the window, I think, of the information that's gonna be coming uh, uh, really how to tailor treatment uh, both to people on, on, I think, the you know, the, like this patient where they've had good treatment, but hopefully one day we'll get to the point where on the front end, the before patients get their initial medications, that they get the one that is most likely to work for them. And that's what we're trying to do uh, with a number of our patients. So, it saves them so much difficulty in their lives. Yeah, absolutely, and not every story is a success story, but here's one where this really made a difference for yes. this person who'd been suffering for a yes. long time. We, we never have enough time on these, these interviews uh, to, sure. to do enough, but let's take another minute, just give me maybe one other example that might come to mind. Sure. Um, some medicines require bioactivation and uh, are more likely to have side effects uh, if they uh, are not activated. And there are a number of patients we've had who have been tried on medications and not done well, but the reason was that they lacked the ability to activate them. Uh, and so, you know, these are patients, again, who are doing the right thing that previously we would have just said, you know, there's something wrong, uh, we'll just move on to something else, but wouldn't know that necessarily the exact direction to go. Uh, and this testing allows us to say, well, this, you know, you as a person are different in this area, and because of that, we're going to choose a different pharmacology uh, and try to pick wisely. And so you've had some cases where that's really made a difference. We've had a number, and, it, and it's not everyone. I mean, you're absolutely right. There are some that come back and um, you know, there's nothing that is usable from that data now, but I think that the, the recognition that this is in its infancy and that more studies are in process, even about the targeted genes that we're looking at, uh, that this, this information could still be valuable to those people down the road. Right. Well, that's just really interesting, and that's one set of tests as mm -hmm. part of a panel Right. of um, a series of types of tests, which can include other things like brain imaging, mm -hmm. um, and as you said, neuropsychological testing and specialized evaluation of many kinds. Yeah. You put it all together, and then in the end, sit down with the patient and with the family mm -hmm. and try to spell it all out uh, and make recommendations that are very individualized, depending Absolutely. upon what you find. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I wish we could have time to talk about all those other parts of what you do. Uh, but thank you for joining us and thank all of you for watching. Um, we look forward to seeing you next time.